Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Kaysen. With me today is our own pianist in residence, Sam Page. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And Jennifer can't join us today, but hopefully she'll be able to join us next week. Uh, but who is joining us today is our friend David Strickle. The stream of David is uh, dropping in, and we're, we're going to be doing a little Taya chatting today, which Sam, of course, is going to be a, a significant part of because Sam is also a Taya graduate. So it's, it's going to be all Taya all the time for the next one hour, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing. You know, it's a really good thing. Um, one thing that I did say in the promo was that we would be taking taking questions for the stream that has it since changed. We're not going to be doing stream questions, but we'll save those for next time. So bring your stream questions to the next live stream event that uh, David is on. But uh, David, we were just chatting before we got started and and uh, you and I have been going through all kinds of crap lately. I mean, this has been, we are riding the roller coaster of polarity. How are, in how a, are we attracting all this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, that's the question, right? How did we, how did I attract this? Actually, it was pretty <laughs> obvious to me, but I'll, I'll be curious to hear what your story is. I was, once I looked back, I said, oh, yeah, I guess I did that. Yeah, yeah, I guess I did that, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the whole, the, the thing I love about the streams teachings is they have never, from day one of my sharing it publicly or, or receiving it, have never said you were here to manifest perfection. Mm. You, you were here to manifest everything that you want, and that's it, and never have a problem, and never have a, a challenge. And a lot of people learn about the law of attraction. And I know that you know, there, there are some books and teachers out there that are sort of promoting this idea that you can sit on your sofa and, and think about things and they pop up in your life. And it's, you know, that's kind of where they stop with the message. And I think people get really frustrated with that. I mean, people it's true to an extent, but, but if you try to live your life that way, first of all, it's boring. And second of all, you do a lot of waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you start um, the, the, to me, the most damaging thing to your joy, your happiness, is when you start judging yourself against what you're able to manifest. Right. You yeah. start beating yourself up for manifesting unwanted things. You know, you kind of have, how did I do this? Oh my gosh, what was I doing wrong? Well, you got to be doing something when you're sitting on the couch. There's nothing else to do. So, of course, your mind is going to go in that direction, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you're sitting and watching uh, television all day long, that's about you know, destructive things. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like to manifest some destructive things. I don't, and I still have had destructive things in my life, however, <laughs> because we, we move through vibrational flow, meaning we're up and down our spiral no matter what. And, yes, we do work in the practice of Taya to raise our default vibration, and what I see for all practitioners is that your life generally gets better, but life is far more complex than just get all the stuff that you want. Yeah. You know, I call that the Instagram version of life where everything is beautiful and everything is pretty and everything is perfect. And, you know, there are people that are putting a, a message out that they're just crushing life all the time. They're the fittest. They have the hottest partner. They have the most money. They have the most houses and the most cars. And it's all smoke and mirrors. And most of us realize that. And the last thing I want to do is, is put something out there that causes someone to compare themselves and, and lower their vibration, that comparison, because right. we are here for the negative stuff as much as we're here for the positive stuff. Which is one of the hardest things to learn, actually. I mean, let's be honest, when we're, especially when you're in the Taya boot camp, but it really just anywhere, um, anywhere that you're, you're dealing with life, it's, it's a challenge to basically come to terms with the idea well, not only do I attract this stuff, I would actually be at a loss without it. Yeah. Absolutely. Your, your soul is desiring it because your, your soul is source. Source is not judging. There's, you know, the whole, the whole judgment of good and bad and positive and negative. That's all ego. I call that the mm. matrix. Mm. Right. You know, that's the collective ego of humanity saying that you're, this is what your life is supposed to be. And if it's not that, you're less than or something's wrong with you. That's human construct. That is not source. Source is love it all all of it every setback every twist every turn every fire you know whatever happens mm -hmm. all of it has value in your expansion as a being as a strand of source that's what we're here for now, now i will have to admit there are times like recently where i would kind of wish that they might spread it out a little bit because <laughs> when you get one thing right after another which has happened to me like okay okay slow the ride down this is a little bit too fast right now. Well, if you think about that we've done enough work in our collective, in our uh, indiv individual practices, where we've readied ourselves to take 
a lump of stuff at once. Yeah. That's because I, I manage, I, I don't know if I didn't have my tie practice, if I would have managed the events of December mm. uh, anywhere near the way that I did or that oh, Michael. Yeah. I understand that. Michael. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure the same thing is true for me. I, well, one of the first things that occurred to me when my situation occurred, when I got, uh, I, I, I don't think you really know the story, but uh, not only did Louise leave me, but she left me with a note. I didn't even find out from her in person. And the, one of the first things that occurred to me after I got over the, the crushedness, because I was totally crushed by the situation, was the realization that, oh my God, all these other things are about to fall apart in my life at the same time. And, and there was a whole litany of them. There was the living situation, uh, the income situation, the vehicle situation. I mean, there was like a whole bunch of them. And in the midst of all that, I said, oh my God, this is just like eight years ago. Because eight years ago, we had a whole bunch of stuff that all hit at once. And it all ironed out. And a lot of it worked out in ways that was miraculous. But here it was, I was going through another crash and burn with a whole bunch of things happening all at once. And for some weird reason, it seemed manageable. Now, eight years ago, it's been completely out of control. And I think probably part of the reason is the Taya practices. Um, and part of it was just I'd been through it. I'd been down the road before. It, it helps when you have a, a little history to, to, to draw upon. You yeah. Know, Sam, Sam's a lot younger than we are. And I know Sam has had issues to deal with. But he has. You, you expand oh, yeah. being in your issues, right? And then once you have that experience... And especially if you've experienced the worst, right? And that next terrible thing that comes along doesn't seem so terrible and is much more manageable because oh. you're a more sophisticated version of yourself. Absolutely. Like from when my, with my mother's transition happening a year and a half ago, but it was a few months after I had finished high boot camp. I handled that a lot better than I would have just the event itself, but then also just the whole journey of like coming to terms with that. It's been, exponentially different than it would have if I hadn't gotten in this like the spiritual practice and then Taya especially because like now I can appreciate her at a vibrational level and just know that she's there and I have somebody other on the other side who's always like rooting for me and loves me so that's just phenomenal and yeah anything that's kind of nothing as major as that has come for me um since then but um any anything that's like kind of may trigger me or put me DTS, I'm getting a lot better at appreciating those moments and knowing it, even if it doesn't feel good, I know that it is serving my expansion in some way. So I'm appreciating it ultimately in the grand scheme of things. So ultimately that experience is kind of like, it's serving as a, a marker or a milestone that you compare other events to and like, oh, well, this isn't so bad. I had to go through that and I got through that okay. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty big. In fact, also, um, the way you were describing that, it, it occurs to me that you are not only finding how to put things into proportion, but you're also finding how to find the joy in it, which is one of the things that you do in time. Oh, by the way, we should, uh, right. for those who aren't, this is going to be the, the all Taya show here, but for those who aren't really into Taya, we should mention the term that, that Sam used, DTS, down the spiral. Oh, first, yeah. <laughs> that, that vibrational spiral is sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. That's what the DTS is, down the spiral. But the, 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 the practices have basically helped you, Sam, to, and they help anybody who goes through that program to just, you know, no matter what comes along, you, you, it's like you're a cork that bobs to the surface easier, right? Because now all of a sudden that, it, it doesn't seem like life and death. Well, it teaches you to release resistance. So you're, you're yeah. out of your ego faster and back into your source being, which is always there anyway, automatically, really. Yeah. And I really exactly. like that analogy, Wald, of like a cord bobbing back up to the surface more easily because, yeah, you like kind of shed all of this baggage and it's easier for you to kind of go up to like that more up the spiral or the more higher vibrations are more accessible and you can get back up there more quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It happens a lot more fast for the reason that David just gave the, the resistance is greatly reduced. I think that's one of the, the um, kind of surprising it's not really a side effect. I was going to say it was a side effect. It's not a side effect because it's one of the main reasons why you go into something like the boot camp. But it's one of the surprising effects that happens. You go through it. You don't really know that, okay, I'm removing resistance here unless somebody points out to you, well, you just removed some resistance. But then you come through and it's like, whoa, what happened here? All of a sudden, I'm, in, I'm like a different person or something. And of course, you're not. You're the same person you were before. But now you have a different perspective on a whole bunch of stuff. And that alone has released all that resistance. It's kind of surprising, really. Indeed. Yeah, the uh, the practice gives you the tools 
to move through what a lot of people would call like a spiritual journey or a spiritual awakening, if you want to call it that. But it's just a journey of awareness, really, of, of mm. who I don't, I don't like to use the term who we really are, because I know I hear that thrown around all the time. <laughs> yeah. Our, you know, our well, authentic self. <laughs> we are we are source. We are expressions of source and source is non-judgmental. Source is all abundance, all love, all, all positive. And what separates us from that is our ego. And really what we're doing in the practice is we're detuning our ego. But the funny thing is, is that usually our ego is exactly what leads us in this direction in harmony with source, because most of us get into the law of attraction because we want stuff. We want to experience right. specific things and we want to heal things and, and solve things and attract things into our lives. And I think some people do stop there and that's fine. That's the experience they have. But to me, it's like this wonderful gateway drug into learning that <laughs> gateway drug. All I love of that. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> all of the stuff can come to you. Absolutely. Law of attraction is a real thing or we wouldn't be wasting our time all these years talking about it. Right. It's right. a real thing. And I think most people understand on some level that it's real, although it can be very frustrating mm -hmm. because again, it's, it's pushed so much as just that one component of, you know, think about what you want to get, what you want and that's it. And then here we are, years into practicing you know understanding the law of attraction and raising our vibration and doing all of these things and we still have obstacles cross our paths who knew Not, never stops but the obstacles right? absolutely serve a purpose and the faster you appreciate the obstacle if you can do it upon arrival great but the faster you move to appreciation the sooner you start realizing why you actually manifested that thing that nothing is really unwanted according to source all of it expands us. So it's all there. Not it's, it's really there to make us a more sophisticated version of ourselves. I think it's also a, a secondary aspect to it that I, I don't think you really get it until you've been mm -hmm. in the boot camp. But that is that, yes, as soon as you're willing to accept, as soon as you're willing to appreciate whatever that thing is, uh, you're going to get through it a whole lot faster. But there's also something to be said for allowing yourself to go through at the pace you can go through. It works. It works both ways, and and both become aspects of the the quality of the experience, because it isn't about racing to get past all the negativity. Right. It's it it's about appreciating all of it, and appreciating means appreciating. It means you know really really getting this and really saying yeah okay I'm glad I'm going through this. I may not want to be, go through this particular thing again. You know, it's not like I want to, you know, continually have my house on fire. It's not like I want to continually go through divorces. That's not where I'm here to live. But yeah, this is there's still good stuff, even though I'm not enjoying this particular part. It's not feeling good to me, but I can still appreciate there is some value in this. And 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 I think the appreciation comes in part from being in it for a while. Because if we if we do if we flip it around if we do it the other way if we try to you know race our way out, well first of all that makes that's what makes it feel chaotic, and second of all we kind of beat ourselves up like well why am I staying so long in this negative space, and now all of a sudden we're back in that negative spiral again. Yeah, you beat yourself up for being down there because that's just adding fuel yeah. to the vibration. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. the thing that I this last this uh, experience that I just had that was the, the part of it that was really different for me is I didn't bother sitting and trying to figure out how I manifested it. I used to do that. Hmm. How I, I need to know how I need to get clarity here. I used to, and I still love clarity, but I don't, I, I realize now that I don't have to go looking for clarity and my appreciation of anything. I merge with source and the clarity just is automatic. It just, it, it's sort of one of those things. You, I don't have to figure it out anymore. It's going to reveal itself to me. And when it does, then the value and the experience is also going to reveal itself to me. Yeah, I, I, I have to admit it's a little bit of an annoyance, but uh, with my event, I, I didn't have to look very far. <laughs> there, there wasn't a whole lot of time like, well, I'm going to dig into this and find out, you know, I'm going to get the clarity on why this all happened. As soon as the thought occurred to me, how did this, uh, this happen? How did I attract this? Within like a second, I had the answer. Uh, like oh yeah okay yeah i guess i did that yeah. the light bulb that was there all along waiting to be turned on right <laughs> oh there, there we go okay <laughs> well it, it was funny because i realized there were a number of things i'd actually been trying to attract into my life but the way i had been putting the requests out i was trying to make them all work within the context of marriage 
And, and so my requests are all framed that way. And the universe was much smarter than me and said, no, it doesn't work that way. You want those things to happen. We got to end the marriage. And, and that was, that was a shock. Yeah. Honestly, that was a shock. If you like, and I tell people this when they, I don't know if you remember or not, but when people come into boot camp, I say that as you continue to raise your default vibration, the landscape of people in your life is going to shift. Yeah. And you're going to get really clear on who appreciates the higher vibrational version of you and, and sort of wants to follow you up there to, to remain your match, which is completely their choice. They don't have to do that. Or who actually liked the lower vibrational version of you. And now there's a disconnect. And one of the interesting things that's happening for me with this, uh, the fire that we had at our home last month, or it was even last month, that was December. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our friends have sort of faded away. You know, everybody yeah. kind of rallied in the beginning and, oh my gosh, uh, anything you need, let us know. This is terrible. This is awful. All, all the normal, you know, things that, that people offer up when something like that happens. And then nothing, radio silence. Mm. And Michael and I both talked about that. And we thought, well, you know, we can sit here and be all victim-y and hurt about it. Or we can realize that they're just not vibing with us right now. And let's pay attention to where we want to go vibrationally, what we want to experience next, and let that be our focus in appreciation of everything that's transpired. <clears throat> and, and sure enough, those people that have sort of faded away, it's it's fine that they faded away. But I do tell people coming into boot camp, if you're in a relationship, boot camp has caused as many divorces, ultimately as it's caused marriages, are people getting together because you're working on your vibration actively, you're learning these tools, and it's like Pandora's box. Once you really learn this stuff, you're not gonna not use it. There's just no way. And I'll tell you honestly, when I took the boot camp, which was about, what, it was a year, year and a half ago, something like that, oh, no, um, no. I never thought it was going to affect my marriage. Really, I, I didn't. I, I I thought, you know, my marriage was working great, no problem at all. Well, apparently it wasn't working as well as I thought it was. Um, I learned stuff afterward that was a bit of a surprise. But, it, I mean, the whole situation surprised me. I, it, it really caught me off guard. So I think it, it isn't so much about trying to evaluate whether or not it's going to affect your relationship. It's about evaluating where you want your relationship, whatever that relationship is, to be and to go. And then deciding, are you willing to do whatever it takes to get there? Or are you going to do whatever it takes to stay where you are right now? Well, the, you know, the, the practice is all about aligning more with source. And of course, the way that we align more with source is loving ourselves more and more and more. Mm. Right. And the more you love yourself and the, you see people kind of fading away, it's not that they're bad or evil or wrong. No, no, no. You know, they just don't have that same level of love for you that you are now finding for yourself. And it's not about being arrogant either. It's, it's about authentic love of self. And what you see is, is that you probably, your friendship group and your acquaintances will shrink, but the ones that stick around are the ones that are really vibing with you up there. And I have risen, I, you know, I've been divorced twice. <laughs> so, you know, raise my vibe, raise my vibe, raise my vibe and see, you know, people enter and exit my life. And I look back now and realize that everything, whether it's material or friendships or relationships or whatever, pets, it's an experience. It's, there's a beginning, middle, and an end, and physical to all things. And it's just an experience that I've had that I don't feel the need to hold on to forever. And that includes the house. You know, I spent a year remodeling a house, and it, it literally got on a Thursday to the point where I thought, okay, we're really done. We paid the last contractor on a Thursday. I did a little walkthrough video of how beautiful it was, and it burned on Monday. <laughs> wow. So we wow. had the weekend of the beautiful house, you know, but there was a lot of clarity on all the momentum that led to that event. And of course, it wasn't just the burning of the house. It was also the passing of Michael's mother who mm. lived with us as a yeah. result of the evacuation. And then as a sideshow, you know, we found out our dog had two broken legs. Oh, had gee. The fire. Now, two days after the fire, our youngest uh, French bulldog, Rocco, he, uh, he had fallen and broken his leg, but we didn't know he broke it. We thought it was a sprain. It was misdiagnosed. Well, we had to wait forever. We had to wait two months to get him in to see a specialist. Wow. Because he's healing in, inappropriately this whole time. Well, the appointment was two days after the fire. Oh. And the mother was in the hospital, you know, with smoke inhalation and just all the stress of evacuation. She was in the hospital. She ended up passing away on Christmas Eve, but four days, five days later. Wow. So I had to take the dog alone to the vet. And uh, in this appointment, I learned that not only did he break his right leg, he broke his, his both his legs were broken. 
Man. Different events, but they were both broken legs. And then in minutes, the, the vet was saying amputation and even euthanization. Oh, was, gee, okay. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, my God, you know, my poor partner, his mother's in the hospital dying. Our house just burned down. And now I have to call him and tell him his dog might have to be euthanized. So that was a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of heavy that yeah, hit yeah. in a week between the 19th and the 24th of December. All of that happened. Yeah, that. that's yeah that, that's a massive challenge that's huge to go through now there is also the flip side you, you mentioned how uh some people won't rise up you know they, they won't uh by def their default won't be as high up the spiral as yours and they won't want to follow you up the spiral but there's also those who are either following you or already up there and they're the ones that i consider to be my my best friends they're the ones who came to my aid when i needed it I mean, that that night after it, it was a Friday, I just finished doing a show and I got a letter after I walked out of the of the office and I found this letter from Louise saying that basically the relationship was over and my world was crashing and burning. And I, I started calling my friends who were all people who, that I knew through the show, people who were therapists and life coaches and so forth. And they were there for me in spades. Why? Because, well, they were high vibration. <laughs> you know, yeah. They knew it. And they also had the skill set to know how to, to advise me to handle a situation like that. So the flip side is you really value the, the friends who are up the spiral with you, the ones that you can count on to be there for you. Boy, they, they, I, I learned that in a bigger way than I had ever experienced in my life before just through that event. Sam, when, you, when, you, when your mom passed, what, what, what was your experience? I definitely, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I definitely did receive an outpouring of love and support um, a lot from some of whom I wasn't expecting as well. So yeah, no, I, I, a lot of that resonates with what you were saying, but like a lot of people like, like sent me messages or texts or things like that of support, but I also got like a lot of just like flowers and cards and little things like that. And a lot of people, um, the funeral happened pretty quickly. Like I think she passed Sat it was it was over the weekend, either a Saturday or a Sunday, and then that following Wednesday was the funeral. Mm. But a lot of people sent who weren't able, um, a lot of people did attend, and then a lot of others who weren't able to attend sent flowers and such. So there was definitely a lot of support and love that came in. So very very appreciative of that. Yeah, and you really notice it when when you're going through that, right? I mean, that that's it's mm. pretty big. Oh, absolutely, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think coming from it, um in the vibration I was at at that point and able to find at least some appreciation for aspects of the situation, I think helped, helped a lot of more high, higher vibrational interactions happen um, consequentially. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes total sense. So, so David, we were, when we, when we got started, before we got started here, we were talking about how it's going to be all Thai. What What is going on with the Thai community these days? Cause uh, we haven't had an update on that in, God, a few months, really. Well, we're still, uh, we started a Patreon uh, last year because I really, uh, I quit doing social media altogether last year. I don't do any social media. Uh, I haven't done any social media in quite some time. And I really focused on remodeling the home and helping Michael with his parents. Uh, we bought a, a much larger home uh, out here in the desert that had a casita, had two casitas. And there was a two bedroom, two bath casita on the front, like a guest house. And there was a one bedroom, one bath. And so it was a pretty big house and it was a big undertaking to completely remodel the whole thing and get in and helping with his parents. <clears throat> so my world really became about that. But Taya uh, boot camp, the Taya Academy, we wound it down. I was, I was thinking about just kind of like, Hey, if it's going to die, let me just let it kind of wind down. And I've written the Taya book. I want to publish it. And if it's not going to be any more, that's okay. Well, the funny thing is, is that it never died. People mm. still were coming and enrolling and coming and enrolling. So I found a way to manage the remodel of the house uh, and to continue to work with the people that were coming into boot camp. And then we started, we, since we were on social media anymore, we started a Patreon account. So now we do everything on Patreon where you can come in and be a patron of the stream, if you will, and subscribe at different levels. And we do, I did yes, last year, live videos in there all, you know, all the time. Every week I was on there two or three times a week. So we're still doing that. We still have the Academy. Uh, I'm very pleased to share. I'm not sharing uh, her name or what's going on, but I have a current boot camper. Uh, you know, we were talking about before we came on, you know, gosh, you know, my house just burned. You're going through divorce. Sam's mother uh, crossed over a while, well, right after boot camp, right? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And here we are using these Taya tools for these major life events. Yeah. Create a lot of suffering, but we've we've used the tools to mitigate our suffering in the experience and find the the um, the abundance in the experience. I should say. I don't want to say necessarily joy because I'm not going to pretend like your mother crossing over is joyful. Right. But there, if there is expansion in the experience, and that's what I mean mm -hmm. by abundance. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm still teaching and now we have a current boot camper because I, again, I was kind of with that whole, oh, maybe I should shut down and not really go back into the academy this year. And sure enough, I have this current person in there that has had uh, an even bigger tragedy than any of us have had, the, the wow. biggest you can imagine, while she's in boot camp and is managing it from a very tie-up perspective, which is extremely uh, satisfying for me. Uh, to know that in some way this practice has helped her in that experience. So the academy lives on. I'm not shutting the academy down. Yeah. I thought definitely not shutting the academy down. I still have my team with me. We meet every Monday morning. I still have people that are working, you know, in, in coaching and things like that. So we will get the academy uh, moving again and, and as far as enrolling more people. But um, as far as the social media thing goes, I don't want to get back into a huge social media presence like I was doing before. Um, I just don't want to do all of that. I don't want to push that hard. I really want to, uh, I want to share Taya with the world. I want to share the strings message with the world. I want to get the book out there this year. Kat and I are, are, have formed a publishing company called Streaming Words Publishing. Oh, cool. uh, so publishing our Taya centric books, including the Taya practice book, which we've been writing since 2018. Yeah, it's been ongoing. Yeah, it's been going for a while. It's actually been finished for a while. I took last year, uh, the be end of 2021, beginning of 2022, I rewrote the whole thing because the stream has delivered all these teachings about the matrix and collective consciousness and all this. And I realized the reason the book took so long is I needed that time to really flesh out the practice, teach it to hundreds of people all over the world, and now know exactly what works and how it serves people for years because we have that history now. So what I need to do now is rewrite the introduction to, oh, by the way, my house burned down. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is why, and this is how it served my expansion, and this is why, this is how you're going to use these tools to navigate things like that when they happen in your life, because this isn't a book about leading you to perfection. It is leading you to more abundance, a happier, more joyful, more abundant life for sure, but the real meaning of life is not about how much stuff we acquire. It's about how we move through our life experiences and appreciation and joy, which expands us. Which is actually another form of abundance, really. It's not a yeah. thing abundance. Yeah. Oh, we've abundance. already said Taya stands for trust your abundance, but abundance does not mean, you know, necessarily being a billionaire or, you know, having a fleet of car. It can. Mm -hmm. Source isn't judging anything. If source isn't judging, you know, someone crossing over is negative or bad or the house burning down or the marriage ending is negative or bad. Source is certainly not going to also judge for us, you know, wanting things uh, to experience things in our environment. It is OK to want things. It's OK to want to experience things. Just don't think that the experiencing of the material things is going to be everything that you think it is. It's not going mm -hmm. to be the expansive experience if you don't have other things going on in your life that, that's going to create authentic expansion for you. Because I've done that. I've understood law of attraction my whole life. I definitely went through a couple of decades of adult life thinking when I have a big enough house and I have the right cars and the right clothes and the right furniture and the right trips, I'm going to be happy. And I manifested all of it and wasn't happy. Mm. That's why I started working on creating what we now call Taya. Realized, okay, yeah. there's something close to this happiness thing. It's not just stuff because I've got all the stuff, I'm still not happy. It's really important. A lot of people have encountered that in their lives, whether or not they're associated with Taya. Just, I mean, you, you gather that just by reading the literature that's out there, reading the books that are out there. A lot of people have encountered that. I remember having guests on the show, people who would, you know, I, I remember one gentleman in particular, I, I don't remember what his name was, but he was uh, of um, Asian extraction and had emigrated to the U.S. as a young man in his teens. And become very, very successful and, and driven type A personality, made millions, built up big companies, all this kind of stuff, and then proceeded to burn himself out because that's not where all the joy was. That's not where the life was and had to do a complete reinvention of himself in order to have a happy, fulfilling life. Uh, and that was indeed the purpose of it behind his book. He had a book written that basically told that story. Um, so yeah, I think there are a lot of people who who encounter that and realize that 
I think there's great value also in the fact that the story gets shared in so many ways, including your own story there, because it helps people. You know, I, I, I almost said it, it helped people to avoid making the same mistakes, but that's not really the way I want to express it. Well, it people people need to, to, usually people do need to make their own mistakes. They hear yeah. it and believe it. They think, yeah, sure, money doesn't buy happiness. Well, you yeah. for you to say, I know, but listen to the people that have experienced it and realize that having nice things, I like having nice things. That's fine. Sure. But just don't think it's going to really bring authentic joy if you're not a joyful person first. And you can be a joyful person first and then still have the nice things come in. I think the Beatles maybe summarized it best. Can't buy me love. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Like That's really it right there. Yeah, can't funny one. Can't escape vibrational flow with money, so. <laughs> <laughs> Which is interesting, actually, because money is energy. I yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's just a tool, though. If you think it's it, it, everything is energetic, everything is vibrational, mm -hmm. and we have a system of exchange in our world, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. We talk about the pyramid and talking about money, and you know the people at the top yeah, of yeah. the pyramid love the system, love the system of exchange. The people at the base of the pyramid that are holding up all the weight of it hate the system. Mm. They feel like they're victims of it. You know, this system's bad. It's wrong. It shouldn't be. Uh, we should all be the same and we should all be equal and we should all be having the same things. If everyone were equal, there wouldn't really be a system of exchange, though. And that's that's the way our, our world of contrast is set up. It's not meant to be perfection. If we came and just manifested every single thing that we wanted all the time and wanted for nothing, we would get bored really fast and we would find a way to blow it all up. Right. And there are some people arguing that that's what we're doing today. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was part of, you know, that I, I have gotten some clarity around the house and it was a complex situation because it didn't impact just me. Uh, Michael's father had passed on three weeks after we moved into the house. And then five months later, his mother mm -hmm. uh, passed over as a result of the evacuation from the fire. And so all of that hit, you know, in a very short amount of time and that impacted her. It impacted him. Uh, you know, it, it, I think we just lost Sam. Uh, yeah. there, was, there was multiple in, people impacted by this event. So I, it would be very arrogant for me to say it was my manifestation or my expansion. But I do see how the universe works in these mysterious ways. Mm. Uh, yes, it, it was a, an event that we all collectively manifested, that we were all marching toward. Little did we know it. And then when it did happen, I was able to sit and witness it happening in appreciation of the fact that, okay, on to the next experience. You know, I spent a year remodeling this house, picking every single thing, right? Every light switch, every fixture, every plant, every rock, you know, everything that went into that house, I picked all of it and spent a year doing that. Finished on a Thursday, have the fire happen on a Monday and between 10 30 PM that Monday night and 2 uh, AM the next day, listen to the fire department rip the house apart there were chainsaws and picks and axes and two hoses going into the house and and i just sat there like this is what we manifested this is this is what's happening right now it wasn't oh my god this is terrible why me and this is awful and you know looking back and retelling the story it sounds terrible you know a woman died uh, absolutely the, the, sure we were trapped uh we actually got trapped in our driveway we we're going to evacuate in, in michael's suv and they uh michael's mother collapsed in the driveway and as a result of that, we couldn't get the car out because we needed to get her in the car. And then they ran the fire hose behind the car. So we wow. couldn't pull the car out of the driveway. So they took her to the hospital in an ambulance. And then Michael and I and the dogs sat in the car all night while they put the fire out. The house is a big house and the main house is what burned it was on the back. So we weren't right there with it, but we saw everything coming and going. And it wasn't until the end that the fire chief took us back there. And I actually recorded it because I thought, you know, it's 2 a.m., I'm not going to remember what transpired, so I'm going to record this. Sure. And I have a recording of our reaction, walking back and just seeing the house just destroyed. You know, and we're both kind of like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, okay. Do you, do you remember how that felt? I mean, I'm just the curious. Do you, not, yeah. do you remember yeah. that feeling? How, yeah. How, it how, was, how um, would you describe it? Um, you know, surreal, you know. Like, yeah. and I really, I was just sitting. I, I took a picture. We were, I was sitting by the fire. Um, and I, I loved that we have two fireplaces in the house and the family room fireplace. I had found these little triangle. I love pyramids. And I, you, if you know my teachings, you know why. And I found these little copper pyramid uh, triangle tiles and they surrounded the fireplace. Hmm. And then I, I just thought it was so pretty. And I love sitting by the fire. Always have. I still will in the future. 
and the, my dog Lola was laying by the fire. I took a picture of her at 8.30 laying by the fire. And I was sitting there thinking, this is perfect. The house is perfect. Everything is perfect. I'm so relaxed in my life right now. I'm spending the next two weeks, the end of the year, doing nothing. I'm excited mm -hmm. to get my book published next year and see what's going to happen with the Academy. And, oh, everything is just so perfect. <laughs> So it's sort of like, okay, I needed to manifest something to disrupt all this this bliss, right? And it wasn't all perfect. There were there were certainly things going on. But, you know, by 1030, by 10, between 10 and 1030, I was on the phone with 911, realizing something was wrong in the attic. So the attic caught on fire, spread across the house. Uh, and then to put the fire out, they had to rip the roof off and rip the ceiling out. And then they pumped water into the house for hours. And so the house then was just this sludge of wet drywall that was ripped down and wet insulation and in lots of water. Yeah. Lots of water. And now I really understand, um, you know, what damage water and smoke do to a house because inside the oh, house, yeah. most of the damage is water and smoke. Right. But it ruins everything. Yes. You know, except for our clothing is okay. We had to get that ionized and cleaned and all that, but you know, upholstery, carpeting, you know, anything textile is just, it's not going to come back from it. And That's of course, true. everything that got wet is not coming back from it. So, you know, it was an interesting, interesting experience that I now identify with. Um, how fortunate, though, that we were able to rent the house across the street, mm. live across the street, and the construction hasn't started yet. Mm -hmm. I live in California, so we have months of permits to go before we get yeah, started. Right. But we'll be out for at least a year. And wow. uh, you know, living over here, our living situation has changed. We're not caring for uh, Michael's parents anymore. They both crossed over now. Uh, Rocco had surgery in LA a few weeks ago. He's he's healing. Um, you know, we're we're seeing the value of Taya more than ever. Uh, mm. Michael has you know learned enough about it to where he's employing it in his life. Uh, plus, he's a psychologist, so he has his own set of tools you know to use sure. for those things. But you know, we sit and talk about it almost every day. Yeah, of all this these events have, you know, transpired to bring us to this place, and the where the value of it is, or where the joy and appreciation can be found, doesn't mean that he doesn't miss his parents and doesn't miss his mother. Absolutely, but yeah. you know, she was she was ready to cross over, and mm -hmm. this hastened that process a bit. But maybe that was her. I'm not speaking for her, but you know, maybe that was her right. manifestation of hey. I'm ready to go. Let's find a quicker way to, to do this. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to even speculate, but I get what you're saying. One of yeah. the things that helped me, I know when I was going through my craziness was when I was in the depths of my despair, because I was realizing that my marriage was ending. Um, the, I realized a few things. First of all, I realized I couldn't stay there. It was, it, there was just too much pain to stay there. I needed to climb out. The second thing I realized was that in order to climb out, I had to do some appreciating. The third thing I realized was that appreciation was too far away. I couldn't reach that right now. So I needed to get some help. So I got help from friends, from very good friends who helped me through. And then I finally reached the point where I recognized pretty quickly my entire life was going to change fast. By fast, mm -hmm. I mean in a matter of months, which is exactly what has been happening. I'm still going through that change. And it was both daunting and exciting at the same time. And I say that because it was almost like it was presented to me as a choice. Are you willing to go with the excitement or do you want to stay with the fear and the frustration of it with the instant clarity that if I choose one, my life's going to feel a whole lot better. If I choose the other, I'm going to make myself really, really miserable. That, that, yeah, that was people stick themselves in, in awful situations because of their, their fear of the alternative. Yeah, until yeah. it's so damn uncomfortable that hey, I don't care what the alternative is. Something's got to be better than this. Yeah, so, and, I've and done the pain, that. I did pain. that in my first relationship. I, I was <laughs> way longer than I needed to be. Okay. Learned. Well, the, the the pain was was excruciating. There was no doubt about that. It was, it was psychic pain and emotional pain. Sure. Um, and I I knew that the only way out was to grow, and and that I needed to find ways to focus toward that and away from the loss, away from the frustrations and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my friend, Joel Elston, who is one of my early co-hosts here on the show, gave me one of the best pieces of advice I've ever had in my life. And it was at the right time. He said, you're going to be asking a number of questions about 
why it happened and what was going on with her and so forth. And you got to be ready for the fact that you're going to not get some answers. There are going to be some answers you'll never get. And there was a part of me that said, oh, I really don't want to hear that. And there was another part of me that said, yeah, you're right. And that has actually well, been more valuable to me than anything else. Recognizing, you know, there are just some things I'm not going to get answers well, on. Well, it all and comes I, down to vibration, right? You're it really, does. It, it sounds very simplistic, but it comes down to you're not vibing. Yeah. Not a vibrational match, period. All the other stuff is the window dressing around vibration that we perceive as our human experience. So your, your friend was exactly right. You're, you're not going to get answers to it, nor do you need them. Because well, I felt like I needed them at the time. I thought yeah, for sure I needed. Why, them. why, why? Yeah, but you'll yeah. get. You, I think the more you practice and the more you experience things, and now that you've had this experience, the next thing that comes around and something else will. It, you know that we're we're human. We're having this this contrasting experience. The next time you'll manage it even even better though, because you will hearken Not back sure. to this time and realize I don't need to know why. You know, it's just it's, this is the experience that I'm having. Uh, this person and I, or the situation and I, were a vibrational match for a period, and that period has come to a close. And I survived, and I will survive again. And, and that saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, is very, very true. Because again, nothing is, you know, nothing is designed specifically to kill you, but what you, do, what you don't lend, let end you makes you a more sophisticated version of you. And even the ending of you can do that. Because we're sure. eternal beings having a temporary human experience, and all of it is 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 designed to expand our being, which expands remember, source. Because we I are one source. time the, the stream just described uh, this lifetime one time as being the equivalent of a weekend vacation. And I, uh, I've always remembered that one because it, it really does give you a perspective on the whole thing. First of all, the weekend it makes it a relatively short period of time, and from an eternal perspective, it is a really short period of time. And secondly, calling it a vacation. You know, that, that, that gives it an appreciative side that we don't often give when we're thinking about what it's like to actually live life. But you know what? It is a vacation. There's a lot of good stuff in life. Mm -hmm. But again, we, we live in this matrix that points us very often to the very worst of life. But that's that's a, you know, a, little, a little piece of the pie in comparison to everything that's going on in our environment is, is going to be the negative thing. But yesterday, I, I, I haven't been on TikTok in a long, long time, and I decided to jump on TikTok, and I'm on there, and I'm kind of scrolling, and it's all this stuff about these um, this earthquake in Turkey, mm. and it was you know it was not something you would ever want anyone to experience, or would you want right. to experience it firsthand? But it, I, it hit me when I started going down the rabbit hole because you know how TikTok you watch one video and you get five more just like it. Oh, of course, it would be very easy to think, oh my God, this is all that's going on in the world right now is this tragedy, <laughs> but it's not. It is happening there for sure, and that's the experience they're having. But if you were able to, you know, dip into any environment, you'll see there's far more sunshine and happiness and people that are, are enjoying life and meeting things and joy going on in any given moment than tragedy. And that's not that we're not ever going to experience tragedy. It's just to remind us that positive is more powerful than negative always. That negative is just this little draw uh, that, that sort of draws us out of source for a little bit so that we have our obstacles, have our things to overcome. But in the end, if we think of ourselves as eternal strands of consciousness here having the weekend trip, then it takes the pressure off of life. Yeah. It takes yeah. the pressure off of our judgment of what other people are experiencing, which sometimes uh, really lowers our vibration even more. Oh, those poor people. Oh, that shouldn't be happening to them. Oh, that's the worst thing ever. They're eternal beings. We need to remember that. It's okay to care. But when you're lowering your vibration and, and wishing that they weren't experiencing what they're experiencing, that's not alignment with source because source is appreciation of all that is. And that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. It is. Oh, yeah. Matrix teaches us, well, you know, what's wrong with you? You don't think that you know, you're not horrified by what you're seeing. What am I doing for them in my, my horror, though? I'm not helping them in my horror. Now, if that horror causes me to take action in some way and, and do something that actually helps them, but the stream teaches us that our vibrational appreciation of them and their journey actually does more for them than just sitting and wishing it wasn't happening. Well, I think the other thing that the horror does is it gives us the opportunity to understand what we don't want. And the yeah. appreciation is how we get to where it is that we do want. But, but you're right. If we stay stuck on what we don't want, 
that that's not going to help at all. That just means, oh, here I am stuck. Yeah, day, you're feeling, day 645 you're being stuck yeah. here in this place. <laughs> well, look how many things that we're horrified by that we continue to fuel in our judgment of them yeah. that intensify and last a long time oh, before yeah. eventually they do solve themselves as everything does. But we continue these things. The things that we judge the harshest tend to stick around. And I was pretty proud of myself, actually, when I went through my crash and burn the weekend, it was the worst weekend of my life. No doubt in my mind about that. But by Monday, I had done a lot of climbing out. I was about 80% of the way out. By Tuesday, I was like 90% of the way out. And I looked back, I said, that takes many people years. I've oh, yeah. Some people days. never. My yeah. mother got divorced. My father left my mother for another woman in 1975. She died in 2014, and she never got over it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a long time to live with something yeah. like that. Yeah, hey, it uh, impacted her life for that whole period, all those decades. I'm sure. Yeah. Je Jeffrey dropped a question in the stream for you. This is an interesting one. He says, uh, does David talk to the stream more or less while going through these lower vibe times, more or less? Uh, I have done enough work in the practice to raise my vibration to a point where they're always right there. Mm. It's source. And we all have source in us. Source is always right there for all of us. But we, I do think most of us have work to do to get back to that easy realization of that. And in the practice, I've done enough work to where the stream is, is, is a click away. And if I'm separated from them, I know it because it feels uncomfortable. We all know what that feels like. You know, when you're mm. in a little, when you're down the spiral, you're, you know, you're not in that negative, you're not in that positive place. They're not readily available, but I know how to get there. I mm. have the tools to get myself there. And I have yet to experience anything where they weren't readily available. It's a breath away, really. Good question. Mm -hmm. It is a good question. Yeah, I think it's one that we all kind of wrestle with it at various times in our lives, particularly when we were DTS down the spiral, when we're in that, <laughs> that really rough place. I mean, uh, Sam, when, you, when, when you're when you in challenging times, do you find yourself uh, reaching to try to find some way to connect or are you, are you able to connect more easily now? There have been definitely instances when I, when I am down my spiral, when I try to connect with Source and I find myself not as, it's not coming as easily or at all um, as it would when I'm more in a more up the spiral place, if you will. But then sometimes it some sometimes it's a little bit more accessible. And that's like those times when I'm like down but appreciating that for its expansion. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it, I think. If you think about it, and I and I, we were all taught differently in different religions and things like that. But I was taught that uh when Jesus was on the cross, he was asking, you know, asking his God, his father, I guess, why have you forsaken me? Have you ever right. heard that story? Sure. Uh, that's, that's how I, I understand that feeling uh, when you're down the spiral. You feel like you've been forsaken by goodness or by source or by God or however you identify that energy, but you haven't been. You're actually just creating a barrier, you're, and you're creating it. And when you learn that you're the one that's creating it, then you can start acquiring some tools to move out of that. But I think where we get tripped up is thinking that we have to flip that light switch overnight and learn how to make that happen instantaneously. It's a journey. This detuning thing that we teach is a journey. And it's a it's an amazing journey that you never really complete as long as you're in physical. I've been practicing this for 13 years and I've been receiving the stream for almost 55 years. Mm. And the the practice itself, 13 years in, I realize now I'm never going to be finished. I'm never going to get it all. I level up year after year after year after year. And I'm in a place now where I can channel without going into the trance. That's why I don't necessarily feel the need to, to stop and breathe and, and have, I can do that, but the stream is right here, you know, flowing through me, unless I'm really down my spiral, they're here flowing through me all the time. And I can answer mm -hmm. questions. You know, it's not like I have to go into trance to allow that anymore. And it's because of the work that I've done to get to this place where they're, they're just right there because, and that's true for all of us. I'm not special. You know, that's true for all of us. I, I, I have a unique ability to communicate it, but we all are beings of source. The source is always, always present, always there, does not forsake us. Our ego does that. Mm. Our ego is the thing that drowns that out in all of that chatter that we pick up in the matrix of you're not good enough and, you know, this isn't real. And, you know, all of the, the religious teachings uh, that very often are very matrix and ego driven as opposed to source driven. You know, all of these ideas and things that we learn, we can unlearn. That's what detuning is. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, an episode that you did with me and with my other co-host, Jody Craven, Jody Lynn Craven, 
uh, where we, we called it dueling channels, which it really wasn't at all, but that's what we called it just to make it sound interesting. And uh, she, she does it more along the way you just described, where she just does it consciously. She doesn't go into a trance or anything like that. Um, her answers were much shorter and more concise. The, the stream's answers were much more detailed, but it was still very interesting to you know kind of compare the answers because the answers were so similar. You know, I would ask you in trance and I would ask Jody Lynn and, and the answers it didn't matter which order I, I, I had you guys. Yeah, you're right. The, the stream has a way of taking 30 minutes to answer a, a simple, they're going to give you well, a whole history of the universe. To... Well, they, they, I love they that do. About the stream now. <laughs> yeah, but, th but that that's part yeah, of their charm. Yeah. And, and the other thing about the stream is the stream will take one question and they will understand all the other questions that go along with it and they'll answer all of them at once. Yeah. That that's where all that yeah. detail's coming mm -hmm. from. Yeah. So it's a little overwhelming the first time. You're like, okay, I asked this question. I just got back an entire uh, encyclopedia. You know, so now all of a sudden I have to process all of that. But it's cool. It's also very interesting. But yeah. now I gotta ask you, does this mean you're going to be doing less stream type, you know, trance type streaming and more conscious streaming? Probably not. I'm not quitting that altogether. Certainly, I will never quit that. But I will yeah. do less of that because I feel like I have been preparing all these years to take their teachings and share it from a human perspective. That's what the Taya practice is. Mm -hmm. And really that's the, the stream gives great information, but the Taya practice gives you the tools to take what they're giving you and actually implement it in your life. Right. Right. That's unique and that's special. And I do have great reverence for that. Um, as a creation, I was party to that creation, but it wasn't just my creation. Certainly my creation, everyone that's ever gone through boot camps creation, uh, teaching it to all these people all these years has really brought out so much more than I was able to, to just, you know, extract from it on my own. So it's this big co-creative thing that every practitioner contributes to ultimately. And I'm humbled and joyful in just being able to share it the way that I do. So I, I will continue to do both. Uh, I'll go into, I'll do the trans channeling sometimes, but I love just coming on and talking about this stuff too. It's a lot more yeah. efficient because it's <laughs> a lot quicker to get to an answer. So, well, plus it's also it, it, it's an opportunity. I mean, anytime that the stream talks, it's still being filtered through the David filter because that's yeah. that's what you know. So that's yeah, always, I'm always. And I, I've always said that my uh, my intention in channeling is to get my ego out of the way of that message as much as possible, mm -hmm. and to have it be as pure source as possible. But we're still using a human vehicle and human language and human terminology to describe things very often that we just don't have words for. And so that's where, you know, my vocabulary comes in, which isn't always perfect, but I'm doing the very best that I can in those situations to, to paint the picture that they're giving me. And I think it's also where it's very cool because what you're talking about doing now, doing more non-trance type communications is you're basically going to kind of lean into the David filter more because now the David filter is actually becoming part of the conversation rather than trying to sit back uh, the way we were trying to sit back before. And I think there's a lot of value in that because the David filter helps make it human, helps make yeah. it real. Well, I have, that's why I always share. Anytime anything goes on in my life, I jump on the podcast and share it or I jump on your pod or someone else's podcast and right. say, hey, you know, my house burned down. Guess what? You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is how I'm dealing with it. And, and it's funny because I'll still... Uh, you know, every once in a while we'll get some criticism, you know, well, if this happened to you, how can this happen to you? You're Mr. Source and all this sort of thing. And, and I, I realized, well, you know, are you really listening to what the stream is sharing? Because they have never come forth and said, go be perfect. You know, go, go have, you know, here's the tools to have a perfect life and never have a problem. We judge. Well, plus you, you described, I mean, this past September, I think it was when you were on the show, you actually described how you had very recently to that point in time, you, you had been riding a very, very high vibe and it was so high that life was getting boring. Yeah. And, and that you literally deliberately went down into the spiral a bit just to liven things up a bit. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot. I, been, I shared that. That's true. That was um, what? Three months before the fire. Something like that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And really, and literally when, I, when we got to the point of the fire, it was getting, it was, it, you know, I had the book to publish, but I, I wasn't wanting for anything. Mm-hmm. Other than that, yeah, I want to publish the book. I, I love the practice. I've worked on this book. I want to get it published, but I, there was no need for anything else. I didn't even need the Academy. Still don't need the Academy, but I'm, now I'm more passionate than ever about continuing it because I see what it does for people and what it offers for people. And I, I want that to continue to be my life's work. And in my own experience, as I uh, was climbing out of my 
own DTS, my own down the spiral, and basically rebuilding my life, I am now even more appreciative than ever before about, wow, I, I've basically, I, I'm not sure I really would wanted to go through the way that I got there, but I'm kind of glad I did because all of a sudden my life and, and the very various aspects of it that I've been wanting to build for a long time are now opening up. They're opening up in a big, big way. And I, well, when I, you're, when I, you're I had allowed myself to stay in that place. If I had stayed in that place of just, my, you know, like you say, egoically, if I had, if I allowed my ego to just say, okay, we're going to do it within the marriage, blah, 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 blah. I don't think I'd be this far along. I, I think I'd still be kind of quite far back compared to where I am right now. Yeah. Well, when you're when you're in a relationship, sharing your life with somebody, and you're not, uh, you're not you're not always going to be on the same page, no matter what, because you're right. independent beings. But you kind of have to vibe, choose to vibe together, yeah, and appreciate one another. And when that stops, then the relationship is really not serving a purpose anymore. And there are a lot of people that are staying there because of yeah. fear. Yeah, if you're detuning fear, then there's there's no reason to stay in something that's not serving both of you anymore. But but it's one thing to say that it's another thing to experience. Say, wow, that really is true. I mean, I just experienced it. I can feel it right now. I yeah. can sense it. Well, you the know, first it, time it, I the first time I split from a twenty year relationship, it took ten years to get there. <laughs> we, had, yeah. we had about seven good years. There was a couple of in between years, and there were ten years that I was there because I didn't want to give up half my stuff. You know, all that stuff that I talked about manifesting. Yeah, right. Uh, and then the second relationship was totally different. Together, we vibed. We didn't anymore. We were done. And we're still good. Mm -hmm. Now the third one seems to be the charm. So we'll see. Okay. <laughs> well, it certainly has been a charm to have you back on the show. I mean, it has been a while. And I'm sure that we'll have you back again uh, more and more. Thanks in the future. for having me as always. It's always fun to come on. Good seeing both of you. And, and Sam, the, I think this is the first time we actually talked in, in much detail about your, your own traumatic event. I know that you mentioned before that you lost your mom. But uh, yeah, you, thanks for sharing those aspects too. Happy to do so. Yeah, I'm glad I got an opportunity to share. And it's always great to talk to you, David, as well. Hey, talking yeah, with I, David see, I just saw you recently. We were just on our training together not long ago, but it's always it's yes. Sam's yeah. like this bright light that anytime I see him, I just I light up. So it's it's always oh, good to see thank you. you. Well, it's understandable. He, I mean, when was the last time you didn't see Sam smile? Let's be perfectly honest. I mean, yeah, don't strain yourself now, but <laughs> <laughs> even when he's doing that, he's still, like, you, you still see the blow there. So yeah, you do. I mean, seriously. <laughs> so, Stay yeah, that yeah. way. Keep that. That's a good thing. That's a very it's good a wonderful thing. thing. Yeah, it really is. So yeah. And we'll, we'll do a, a stream session um, next time or the time after something like that. So we won't be leaving that all behind, but uh, this has been fun. This has been fun. Yeah. Even, even though we've been talking about these crazy roller coaster, traumatic type of experiences, it's been fun. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Funny how that works. Yeah, it's good stuff. So thank you much. Thank you to all the people who jumped in on the live stream. I, I didn't acknowledge everybody, but I saw Terry was there, Jeff was there, and uh, Luke, I saw, I think, uh, a message from him and others. So all of you who jumped in on the live stream, thank you very much. Thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>